Hey friends, the day has finally come. System has added a Google Calendar sync to their calendar option and I've been playing around with it a little bit and wanted to walk you through how to use it because I think we might be about ready to say that you can use System instead of something like TidyCal or Calendly for your basic booking system, which is super exciting. So let's walk through how to do this. You're gonna be in your system dashboard and you're gonna to go to your user settings menu over here. You're gonna click settings and that's gonna take you to this page. And then you're gonna go ahead and click right where it says integrations over here, okay? Now on this integrations page, this is the one that we're looking for. Ideally, you've already set up Zoom or Google Meet. So if you haven't done that yet, you need to do one of those as well. I've already set up Zoom and connected it to my account. It's very simple. You just have to be logged into your Zoom and it's basically done for you. But right now we're gonna focus on setting up Google Calendar. So click that, click connect, and then select. There will be a pop-up. I don't think you can see it on my screen because it's a separate window, but there's gonna be a pop-up that says choose an account or sign in with Google. And you're gonna sign into whatever Google account you want to be syncing with and hit continue. And then it's gonna ask you to select what system IO can access. So it'll say system IO wants access to your Google account, select what it can access, hit select all. So it has access to everything it needs and then scroll down in that menu and hit continue. And that's gonna lead you to this little setup box here. So now you see that my account has been connected and my default calendar is my business calendar, which is the default on this account. And then we have this option here, which is checking for conflicts. And this is what I was saying was missing from the system calendar feature that they've now added, which is very, very, very exciting. So this here, when you click it, will show you a list of all of the calendars that your Google account has access to. And you can come in here and let it know which things it should be checking before it accepts a booking on your calendar. And so these are all of the ones I wanted to check. If I have an event on any of those calendars, I don't want someone to be able to book an event on my calendar, okay? It auto saves as you're selecting them so you can go ahead and close out and now we're done connecting Google Calendar. So the question is, what do we do with that? If you go to CRM right here and go to calendar, you'll probably have an event if you've created one before or maybe you need to create a new event. Either way, it's not too hard and we can say discovery call or whatever you wanna call it. You can pick your event duration, however long you want that to be. And then location is either online meeting or phone most likely. So it'll tell you to pick which online meeting, okay? And we're gonna go ahead, I don't have a Google Meet set up so that doesn't work. You could post a Zoom link here if you wanted to, but I already have Zoom integrated. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save because it'll create the meeting link for me through Zoom. And then I wanna add this event to my Google Calendar there, and I will select my, sorry, Zoom is in the way. I will select my business calendar here, there, okay? And then you're gonna to need to pick your date range of availability. So it auto defaults to the next month, but let's go ahead and just like drag that out a little bit further. We'll say through July, I want this event to be available. And I wanna use my global availability. So if you have not set that yet, you're gonna to need to, but or you can just shut this off and then pick specific time slots for this. But I'll use global availability because I've already set that. And then come down here, start time increments shows them how many different time slots. So if you have every 30 minutes, it'll say 12, 1230. If you have every 15 minutes, it would say 12, 1215, 1230, 1245, that sort of thing. Um, daily limit, as a caveat for this daily limit thing, I think there's a bug here right now and I'm gonna let their system support team know about this because I think this is not working as they intended. If you put a daily limit here, it's gonna count all of the events that you have on any of those conflict check calendars. And if you're already over that, it's it's not gonna let them book. It's not gonna check specifically this event. So I had this issue earlier when I was trying to set it up. I had a daily limit of two, but I already had more than two events every day. And so it wasn't showing any availability on my calendar. So I'm just gonna leave that blank for now. And then buffer time is if you wanna allow gaps between your meetings, you can say what how much buffer time you want. Say I want you know, at least 15 minutes before so I can prep and at least five minutes after so I can take a breath before my next thing. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and leave this here, automatically detect and show the times in my invitees time zone and hit save and preview. 
And when we come into this, you will see now that I have availability. And right now it's set to 24 hour time, which I'll show you how to change in a second. But this is all of the availability that I have for these different dates. And you'll see that it's different for each day because it's reading from my Google Calendar. Yes, amazing. Okay, so now we have this event, this discovery call event set up. And the question is, what do we do with that? Well, assuming that you've set it up properly, and that you've also got your availability tab all set up with the different days and we and times that you're available. The next thing is to add it somewhere. So you could either add this in a funnel or you could add it on your website. If you're doing something like a discovery call where it's free, go ahead and add it wherever you want. <clears throat> if this is a paid call, well, right now the way that you would make it a paid call is you would have a checkout page where someone pays for a call with you. And then on the thank you page, they'd be able to book that call and you would embed the calendar on the thank you page uh, after they pay you. So that's basically how you would do that. For this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and add it to my website. So we'll go to blogs and then I'll open up my main website here and go to pages here. And then we'll create a new page that we'll call calendar test, but you can put this on your scheduling page, whatever you want. So cal test and we're gonna create a blog page. And when we open this, you'll see that it's blank except for the header and footer, just fine. And then we can just drag and drop this calendar right over here. Ta-da, okay. So this obviously has a certain look to it and we can click the calendar and edit the look of that. So you can edit the headline, step one, set up your booking details. You can edit the button text. I'm gonna change the format to 12 hour time because I'm American. And then we're gonna pick which event we wanna be able to book. So we'll hit discovery call here and it'll tell you my name, discovery call, that sort of thing. We can change our colors, which is great. Ta-da. Okay, so now that's more branded with my colors. And then we can also scroll back up and do a form where people have to answer questions. This was another thing that Sassan was missing um, that they added in relatively recently. And so this is now an option. Uh, the caveat being that it needs to be a form that is attached to your contacts. And so there's not gonna be a big message form unless you've created those fields already for your contacts. And so if you wanted to do that, you would need to go to your contacts tab. And when you look at a contact here, you'll see that you have the ability to add a new custom field. So you can add a new field and you can say, what stage of business are you in? Okay, and you can hit save, right? And then now you have that custom field there. So you can't do like drop downs or choices that way. Um, the other thing that you could do is you could add a survey or you could have it go to a Google form after they fill out their information as the thank you page. There's a bunch of different things that you could do. Um, but if you wanted them to have fields available to fill out in this page, then that's what you would need to do. You need to create the custom field first because these are just form inputs, right? And so we would just add another form input below this one and this one would be input type. And this is our test field, for example. Okay, and they would have to type in their test field before they can submit the form. Now you also have access to a thank you page, right? And this is your booking confirmed, and you can change some of this here. Um, you can also do a redirect. So you can redirect to a custom URL, that after they say finish, then that would lead to a different URL, which could again be that Google form. And you may wanna say like, make sure to click finish to go fill out our client intake form next. Okay, so you could do that. And then this would be like whatever URL you want it to go to. Okay, and then you're basically done. So if I was to preview this, okay, so this is what it looks like now. And you can see that this is the discovery call and I can pick a date, I can pick a time, I can hit next, and it's gonna ask me to fill out everything here. Da, 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 da. And then you can submit and it would give you that little thank you with directions on how to get to your follow-up. So that is how you would use this new calendar feature now that it actually can do the things that we need it to do. 
Yay. So now it's actually checking for conflicts. It lets you have people fill in a form. It lets you redirect to wherever you want afterwards. You can hide this booking form on the thank you page of a checkout page so that people have to pay you first. And that basically allows us to knock another tool off of our list. So unless you need something super complicated with your booking tool, this can now do the job, which is really amazing. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions about how to use this tool. We can absolutely cover this in the Q&A on Friday if this is something that you're interested in looking into. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually add this exact video into our lesson on setting up your calendar because this is brand new and is now actually capable of replacing all of the other tools. And that's one less thing we've got to worry about when we're starting our business, which is awesome. So I hope this is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, let me know.